Hello, it's Lawrence Romanowski from Calgary, Canada. Uh, it's a beautiful uh, fall day and I have a lovely car here to, to show you that's for sale that uh, would come pretty close to being the ideal car to drive around. Uh, actually, I can't think of many more machines that I'd rather be driving. This is a 2009 uh, Porsche uh, Carrera 4S Cabriolet. So apart from the turbo, it would be the next next uh, rung on the ladder in the Porsche hierarchy. So that gives you a 385 horsepower, a 3.8 liter flat six. And uh, uh, this is the PDK gearbox. This is the first year of the PDK gearbox. Um, uh, and that replaced the Tiptronic automatic. So a, a quantum leap for the new double clutch gearbox on this car, okay? Um, so we have performance that's you know, zero to 100 and under five seconds and you know, probably you know, 100 and, well, probably pushing 300 kilometers an hour on the track. Um, and we have the, uh, in this era, we had the narrow body cars, which were the, which were the regular cars and the wide body, which were the S. So the S has got the much more pronounced rear fender flares, which you can see there. Okay, so it's um, uh, metallic uh, uh, red. I can't remember if the, co the, the color is called ruby or not. I'll probably have to look that up and put it in the description. And we have the uh, tan interior. The interior of these cars could be the uh, standard leather or it could be the full leather. If it was the standard leather, you get leather seat covers, but you wouldn't get this uh, leather on the top or the center of the door panels or on the armrest, and you wouldn't get the, uh, the contrast stitch. Also on the dash, it would be a synthetic material, and then you wouldn't get the leather dash with the hand stitching. The full leather interior adds quite a bit of warmth to the interior of the car. There's a pretty big difference. And I think, at least around here, most of the C4Ss were ordered with full leather, and it would have been about a $5,000 upgrade. Okay, so uh, also going into the car, um, we see, uh, of course, that it has the PDK gearbox. Um, we have the white-faced dials. We have the Bose stereo. The Sport Chrono is an important uh, option on the Ss. Um, it gives you the launch control, and of course that's a timer, but it also, uh, when you put it in um, Sport and Sport Plus, the regular ones just have Sport, the Sport Chrono gives you Sport Plus, and when you put it in that setting, it remaps everything on the car, so not just the, um, not just the gearbox, shift points, uh, how long it holds the revs, uh, but it uh, also remaps the... Um, uh, the uh, accelerator travel, the PASM uh, sports suspension as well. Okay, so the Sport Chrono does a lot for the car and it's kind of like a signature option that most of the S's have and that if it doesn't have it, it's not the end of the world, but it's kind of lacking. So it's one of those, one of those uh, engines that you, um, uh, or one of those options that you uh, want to pick. Okay, so we've got the full nav and the full infotainment, and it hasn't been modified. Um, uh, a lot of these, these systems have been uh, taken to the audio shops with varying uh, degrees of success. So this one is left, uh, is left alone, which is a good thing. Oftentimes with the modified um, systems, you have draws on the battery and the car won't start. You have all kinds of problems, okay? Um, this car also has the paddles for the shift, and I'm getting the feeling that I should move this car, so I'm gonna do that right now. All right, disaster averted. Um, uh, additionally, we have, we can see we have the memory seats, with the three positions, and these are the 14-way sport seats. So there's two seats. There's one that's more aggressively bolstered, uh, and uh, you know, normally we call that the, the sport seat and this would be the comfort seats. They're both sport seats. They both have bolsters, um, but, uh, but these are a little bit more comfortable, a little bit easier to get in and out of. Um, so I think that that is it for the interior options. Uh, so let's go to the exterior. We've got the, um, we've got the uh, Xenon headlight upgrade in this car. Uh, we have, uh, let's look at, we've got the headlamp washers, uh, which are chromed. Uh, we have the, uh, let's go look at the tires. 
so these are uh, Continentals. Um, they look to be in you know almost new condition, and they have a fairly aggressive M plus S rating on them. Um, so uh, I don't see an N rating, uh, which is kind of the Porsche, you know, what the Porsche dealer wants you to buy. Just an explanation on that. Um, these tires can get very specific, and the, the Porsche engineers will say, well, you know, if we're doing um, emergency lane changes at 250 kilometers an hour, we need a special tire, and they do that, by the way, um, we need a special tire uh, that's designed for the rear engine car and the rear weight bias, and that the, uh, you know, the inner part of the rear tires needs to be specially done to uh, give the car the stability it needs. Therefore, you need N-rated tires. Therefore, you need to go to the dealer. And uh, it's true. I mean, and, 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 I mean, it's true. They, they're, they're pretty thorough when it comes to their engineering. If you are doing emergency lane changes at 250 kilometers an hour, I would recommend getting N-rated tires. The problem with them is that is that um, they don't work if it's cold. And by cold, I mean anything around zero. In fact, they're rated for, uh, they're not rated for anything under seven degrees Celsius. Sorry, these, these trucks are like chasing me. Um, if it gets to about zero, they don't work at all and it becomes dangerous. If it gets to like minus 20 or minus 25, and let's say you have to move the car outside, the tires actually crack. And then you, and then you have to like throw them away. And you won't get a warranty replacement. They'll say, well, did you drive the car when it was uh, under minus seven degrees Celsius? And you'll say, well, I, you know, I do live in the Western hemisphere on the planet Earth. It does occasionally get under minus seven degrees Celsius. And I'll say, well, we can't help you then because those tires aren't designed for it. So that's not that helpful. I think for most people in Calgary, they'd gladly, gladly trade a s slight to imperceptible improvement on emergency lane changes at 250 kilometers an hour for a little bit of all-weather usability so the car doesn't slide off the road at the first little dusting of snow and you don't have to throw your tires away if you have to move the car outside in the winter, all right? So that, that, those are my comments on the tires. Um, take that for what it's, uh, what it's worth. Um, and uh, so overall, this car would have been about $145,000 uh, when it was new. Um, it's probably fully depreciated now. I think we'll see a floor where, you know, 996s are, you know, maybe maybe 40 grand, 997.1s are 60, and, the, and then the, the point twos are in the, in the high 70s and the 80s, depending on the model and, and, and the spec. And by 991.2, I mean from 09 in a normally aspirated Carrera and from 2010 in a turbo. And those give you the important, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the taillights changed, stylistically it changed, bumper covers changed, the engines changed to direct injection, and you got the PDK gearbox. So there's a big difference between a 0.1 and a 0.2, uh, a 911, not just in performance, not just in the use of the, uh, the gearbox, uh, but in the reliability as well. Because the thing about the 996 and the 997 um, normally aspirated engines that, that aren't turbocharged is they have a thing called an IMS bearing or an intermediate shaft bearing. And it has this habit of wearing quickly, sending metal shrapnel through the engine and grenading your engine. And there doesn't seem to be a real easy way to predict it. And it's always kind of a ticking time bomb in your 3.4, 3.4 and 3.6 uh, normally aspirated 996 and 997.1 engines. And, you know, it really, you know, it just, for me anyway, it, it kind of really takes the kind of the shine off the car because I don't want to be driving this car and always thinking that maybe I'm one of the unlucky guys that have an IMS failure and the engine blows up. They also have some bore scoring issues as well. So it's not just one issue either. And the problem is underreported because it mostly happens in cold weather um, and and because Canada doesn't take a lot worldwide, a lot of the worldwide allocation of 911s, you don't hear about it too much in the forums, but locally uh, it's a real problem. And and with the Cayennes, the bore scoring issue is, well, it's, it's almost 100% in, in the 04 Cayenne, for instance. So this is a real issue in this part of the world. And if you get a 911 turbo, it's got the Mesger engine, it's a completely different engine. It doesn't have the problem. If you get a 
uh, 997.2 from 09 on in the C2S or C4S, C2 or C4, or from 2010 in the turbo, well, the turbos don't have that problem at all. But if you get if you get the, the, the 997.2, then you just sidestep the problem altogether. It's a new engine. It's a direct injection engine. And this engine's also shared with the 991. It's 385 horsepower here in the S, uh, in the 991, they found another 15 horsepower to make it uh, to make it 400. This car is probably as fast as a nine, uh, 991, though, because uh, it's a little bit lighter. Okay, so that's the summary of the car. It's you know the 991s were bigger, a wider front track, a lot more refined. Uh, people criticized it mostly unfairly because of the electric steering. It wasn't as alive. It didn't have the feedback. It was a little bit bigger. The relationship between the, the steering wheel and the front fenders and the hood was a little bit different with a 991. People complained that it was, you know, maybe too much of a grand touring car and not a real Porsche. Well, they always say that with every new Porsche. So you know, take that with a grain of salt. 992 is even bigger. Um, but this is, you know, this is quite a bit smaller than the 991s and 992s. Uh, you know, probably, you know, history will look at it as a little bit more of a pure interpretation of the nine, of the 911 theme. And it's not overrun by electronics and apps and connectivity and all the rest of the stuff that the new car is. Okay. So, um, I think that the, the value on this car has, uh, reached a bottom. Um, the cars are, uh, in inherently reliable, um, uh, you know, apart from the, apart from catastrophic failure in some models but generally speaking on this model um, they're they're reliable they they hardly require any more than an oil change every year every 10 years you probably have to take the engine out and 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 do a major service on it for leaks that happened to this car it just got out of Porsche Center Calgary it was a 7,000 and change bill had a water leak and so they needed to take the engine out of it and while they were in there they did a bunch of other stuff okay so that's normal um that's normal for the cars normal for just about any 911 every 10 years you kind of have to do that okay so then uh we talked about the, the spec what it is the c4s 385 five horsepower engine pdk we looked at some of the options most importantly sport chrono full leather uh are the big ones and the, and the power seats okay so we've got that far now what about um this particular car okay so this car was bought in 2010 and uh, the owner lives in the inner city in Calgary and uh, really didn't drive it much, cycles a lot. Uh, and uh, this was, uh, you know, this car was just in the garage. It's got 72,000 kilometers and change. Uh, so, and you know, he's had the car more than 10 years. So it hasn't been driven much. It's just seen the Porsche dealer. There's nothing exceptional in the maintenance history of the car other than just changing tires and, and, and normal servicing. It was sideswiped um, with uh, and repaired at Cosmos Collision. That that's my friend Locke who does that work, and they're the authorized Porsche, Range Rover, Tesla body shop. So he does nice work. So it does have that insurance claim on it, and um, it's about it's about 17 grand. Unfortunate, but it was fixed properly. Okay, um, so that's the history of the car. We have all the maintenance files. We have the invoices for the bodywork on it, and now let's just take a look at the uh, overall condition of the car and just go through it. Okay, so it presents really nicely. It's not, I would say, you know, a, a complete cream puff. Um, you know, it's got, you know, a few little marks and, you know, on different panels and so forth. Um, and it's not really, was never really trying to be that. It, it's, it was a car um, and he drove it, uh, albeit, albeit not very often. But it's free from anything that you'd consider to be uh, like a real flaw. But uh, let's just go through it here. And uh, I'll pick up um, every little thing I can find, uh, you know, j just in case the buyer's you know, sight on, wants to buy it sight unseen. The windscreen, uh, it looks original. Um, it has mild pitting on it. You can see a few little marks kind of everywhere. Uh, in a couple tiny locations, you can see a star there. And I think that there's a little one. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, it's hard to see in this light, but a little tiny star there. Okay. 
So, you know, $2,000 windshield would freshen it, but you live in Calgary and the minute you do that, you might get a big rock through it. So you probably want to wait till you get like a bigger, you know, stone chip before you spend two grand on the windshield. So I just recommend leaving it alone. The paint, we have the, the PPF on it. It's halfway. We can see some mild swirl marks. Uh, that would polish out easily. There's nothing deep. Um, we've got uh, a couple little pits and you, we can find these, you know, kind of throughout the car. Uh, there's a few stone chips. I don't think I'd repaint the hood. That would just be kind of silly. No effort's been made to like touch up these chips. So I just get, I just get some paint mixed up and, um, and then uh, just do a few light touch-ups on the car. You know, sometimes the bumpers get rubbed and we don't see that here. This is just from washing it. And the bottom of the car, uh, look, there's no big scrapes on it. Sometimes, you know, some, sometimes it's easy to, easy to mark up this uh, chin spoiler and chew it up. And this one actually is remarkably free. Most of them have some kind of damage. Okay, so there's nothing on the front bumper and uh, we look around for, uh, well, let's look at the alloys um, and they look pretty decent on one side of the car. There's a couple little marks there. Um, let's check this one. Well, this one has a bit of scraping on it. Also, we have some delamination of the clear coat, you know, scraped a little bit, okay. And we have some more delamination of the clear coat. So, you know, you might refinish the alloys. That's about $200 a wheel. So this is curbside. So you can see that uh, it's picked up some marks there uh, and should also be refinished. And this one has a few marks. So, so even if you did all, all the wheels, that's about uh, $800. Okay, let's look for door dings. And I don't see anything on this side of the car at all. I don't see any, any door dings. So it hasn't been parked next to other cars very often. And I don't see anything on this side either. It looks perfectly smooth to me. I, I, the, the invoices will tell me which side was done, but I can't tell visually what was painted. There's no, no evidence that it was painted uh, that uh, I can, um, that I can determine. Okay, so let's go to the back. And has it been rubbed on the back? I don't see anything. Uh, the exhaust pipes could use a good detail and polish, but I don't see that the rear of the car has any scrapes at all. Inside the car, these cars can have a little bit of a hard life. These plastics in here um, aren't that durable. The, uh, the soft leather does mark up. The plastics on the, the center console mark up a little bit. The steering wheel marks up. Um, and, you know, if the thing's left in the sun, the leather can shrink and stuff. So this hasn't been left in the sun. The leather is still in uh, beautiful shape. Um, I don't see any damage in the, in the speaker grill. Sometimes this gets kicked in and cracked and it's not. And, uh, you know, these pockets also can, uh, uh, they can break and, and this isn't. This piece here is fairly susceptible to damage. It gets, um, you know, it gets scratched up pretty easily. This one isn't. Uh, the bolsters, the bolsters don't wear very well at all in this car. If you are, let's just say you're a larger guy and not that limber, you'll wear this out really quickly. Okay, so that isn't the case here, and the leather looks in 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 really nice shape. There's hardly any wear at all, and it hasn't been painted. Sometimes you get a bunch of wear, and then and then you you know you bring in the upholstery guy and he gets some spray paint and he like sprays over it, and it looks good, you know at 72 dpi but when you sit in it and touch it and stuff it's just not the same okay so this leather you know you've got some uh patina very light patina and it hasn't been uh hasn't been painted at all the wheel's not scratched up the dash isn't shrunk uh and still looks good and this isn't chewed up there's a few little marks um just from use uh, and it has, sorry, it's 73,066 uh, kilometers on it. Like I said, 72 and a half. Um, so overall, there's really not too much to complain about with the interior. It's not been mo modified. Um, 
uh, new speakers haven't uh, haven't been uh, let in, and overall it's a nice shape. I'll I'll put up the top for you, and uh, and we can look at that. Stereo works. George sounds as uh, happy as ever. And uh, we have a glass rear window in these, so of course you don't have to worry about that. There's about a bunch of fuzz on this car from me just washing it. Uh, they all wear there, and they all wear where the crease is, but this one's pretty good. Um, you can also see just very, very, I don't know if you can see that, but very, very minor wear. And that happens when you, when you lower the top and it's dirty, it, it can be a little bit abrasive. Some of these cars can be really bad uh, even after a few years. So this one, this one's excellent. Uh, but, and, and this piece here, that this color is, well, I've seen it, you know, that big on other cars. So uh, I'm happy with the top and uh you know the windows go up the regulators work it's just been through the shop so we can be confident that you know the car doesn't need it, anything and uh and uh it doesn't have any deferred maintenance of any kind so all right we have uh so okay so what what's the summary on the car uh well we have a desirable car to start with the last of the 997s the last of the smaller um uh smaller 911s but with the highest spec okay so that's always that's always good the collectors normally sort of prize the first ones and the last ones of any series um although nobody's going to want the first of the 997s unless it's a turbo okay so you got a great car and it's uh, very nice colors you know a little bit atypical it's not something a little bit different than the than the silvers and blacks interior and in tan is nice it's rare around here most of the interiors are black and it, it, the cabin's way nicer in the lighter color, in my opinion. We have a what is almost, you could say, a one-owner car um, that's been lightly driven and taken care of its whole life. Um, and uh, that's just been through the shop with a engine out major service. Uh, we have a, you know, an unfortunate $17,000 claim on the car, but it was repaired properly by the uh, Porsche Auto authorized body shop and I can't tell where it is. Um, I don't even know what 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 side it was on, okay? Um, so it was uh, it was done properly. We have some evidence of light use. Uh, it was some mild, uh, you know, small chips, mild pitting on the windscreen, slight wear on the roof. Um, the, the rims are a little bit chewed up and, and a couple of them are delaminating. Uh, we have new tires um, that are M plus S, which are a lot better suited for Calgary, in my opinion. And we've got a car that's more or less fully depreciated. And if history is anything to go by, you shouldn't really have to do much more to this car than annual service. 10 years from now, take the engine out again and address the leaks and uh, and go on. That's all you need to do. It's uh, There's a reason 911s have been the most popular premium sports car and uh they're you know fast practical beautiful good ownership propositions you know lots of you know people are never sorry about a 911 so that's the story with this one it's lawrence romanowski from calgary canada and uh please contact me with the information below in the video uh if you think you're interested in buying it thank you bye, -bye.